Hello, good morning, and uh, welcome to the solar shed. Um, oh, hold on, we could have had a pen, hold on. Right, okay. Usually I'm walking around, waffling on, and I thought I'd give a quick, well actually, this is gonna be a little bit longer, about six or seven minutes, so you might wanna pause, put the kettle on, sit down, and watch. I get a lot of questions via Twitter and email and Facebook because I'm, hopefully I'm quite good at customer service and I like to tell people lots of things without having to visit them first. It's a waste of petrol, isn't it? When you just talk over the phone. But the videos that I've been doing, um, some people still don't understand because they don't know what inverters are and all that. I want to show you all condensed what the feed-in tariffs were, how they work, how they benefit you. And I, again, I've used the word feed-in tariff when that's because that's what you know them as. It's actually called the Clean Energy Cashback Scheme. And this is where the confusion comes in. A lot of people think that you're either saving money or sending it back down the grid and you get paid for it. It don't actually work like that, okay? It does not work like that, regardless of what you think, regardless of what you've been told. Let me show you how it works. It's called the Clean Energy Cashback Scheme. Now in your house, you have a fuse box. And there's your fuse box, all right? You know where your fuse box is? Where your flicky dicky switches are when the lights blow, yeah? Okay. And here, you've got your meter. Your meter? That's the one that you have to count, you have to read to give to your energy company for them to rob you of all your money, yeah? Fuse box and meter. Now coming in, you've got the national grid. So that's the pylons, the wires, the underground cables, yeah? That's all the energy, the electricity coming into your house. And then here, you've got your ring main. You can't see your ring main, all you see is the sockets in the wall. And on the sockets, you've got your plugs, and you've got your TV, your toaster, your fridge, your kettle. If you're retired, you've got your jacuzzi, and you've got your underfloor heating in your conservatory, and you've got your swimming pool, because that's what retired people have, isn't it? Okay, so all of that costs money, because you have to bring electricity in there, it gets counted, every time you turn something on. And you might be paying 13 pence per kilowatt. Now some people are paying nine pence a kilowatt, some people are paying 24 pence a kilowatt. It depends on the deal they've been stitched up at. There's only one deal with us and that's free electricity. Let me show you how it works. So, we come along, after you've got your three quotes, because that's what you must do, because Martin bloody Lewis has told you, get your three quotes. If you're going to get quotes, can you do like for like quotes? Yeah, look at the quality of the product, the outputs of them, the cables, the couplings, the fixing clips, not just the price at the end of the day. We can all buy cheap. You usually end up buying twice. But anyway, we come along and we put the panels on your roof. Not to scale. Because if it was down to me, you'd have twice as many. Right. The panels... They generate electricity, and that electricity is in direct current format, D, C, positive and negative. And that electricity comes into this device here, which is your inverter. Now the inverter's job is to convert that electricity into alternating current. So it's constantly searching for whatever the current is coming in here, and then sends it back out there in your house at round about the same. So it's sort of tracking it all the time. And there's different inverters which will track at different speeds and give you more efficiencies. But that's that, you do your research, yeah? Simple as that. Right, so we've got electricity coming into the house now. So, electric solar companies have to put a meter on your system here. Now this is called the generation meter. Not a feed-in tariff meter, a generation meter. And the job of this meter is to count all of the kilowatt hours, the units of electricity that come in here. Same as this meter counts those ones coming in there where you pay your energy company. The ones that come in here, your energy company pays you. Strange but true. Oh, it's too good to be true. It must be a con. Ah, right. I had enough of all of that. This is how it happens, all right? This is what happens. So, at the moment, the rate is just over 40, it's 14.26 or whatever, it's, it's 14 pence, right, 14 pence. So if you generate a thousand kilowatts over the course of a year, 
you're not doing very well because you're only going to get 140 quid. 2,000 kilowatts, 280 quid. 4,000 kilo, 4, kilowatts, 560 quid. Whatever. No one can predict with great certainty exactly what you're going to generate because we don't know what the cloud's going to be like on the 31st of August, do we? No, we don't. We don't know what the cloud's going to be like at sunrise or sunset or in the middle of the day. We don't know when the showers are going to come across. So don't ask us about when's my payback because we don't know. We can only um, assume a certain amount based upon average weather conditions over the last five or six years. That's all we can do. Within your postcode, we can do that. But we're not brilliant. Yeah, we're clever, but we're not brilliant. So you're going to earn money. Now that money goes up in line with the retail price index. Yeah. Now we assume that that's going to be round about 3%. Yeah. So if anybody says, oh, the RPI is going to be about 5%, they're lying to you because they don't know. We make a safe assumption at about 3%. 2.8 to 3.2, it wouldn't be too far out. And don't forget, the RPI is normally about a, um, half to 1% higher than the CPI. Yeah, let's not confuse the two. And that goes up every year in, for, in line with inflation for 20 years. And that's free money. So can you just imagine 20 times that going up in line, compounded up, several thousands of pounds, free money, yeah, free money. Okay. It doesn't matter where that electricity goes. It's a generation tariff. You're guaranteed to get paid just for generating electricity. End of. Okay. Right. That's safe. That's in the back pocket. Buy a tank of oil with it. Pay your gas bill with it. Pay the rest of your electricity bill with it. Treat the missus to a trip to... Clacton, wherever you want to go. I say Clacton because I was brought up there. It's a nice place. Anyway, there's your money. There's your generation tariff. Okay, we'll call that GT. Guaranteed. Now, the electricity then comes into the house. And if you're using the electricity during hours of daylight, you're now saving whatever it is you'd normally be spending. Now, if it's a really, really bright day, you generate loads of electricity, you've just got a few things on, you're going to be saving everything that you'd normally be spending. So as well as your energy company paying you money, you ain't going to give them no money for what you're actually using because you're the energy company now. You're making the savings. You're using your electricity. So you've got your savings and your earnings all combined at the same time. Now, if a big cloud comes over at the same time you put the kettle on, you'll be using all of your electricity and some of theirs. And if the cloud clears and the kettle goes off, and you've got your TV on, might have the washing machine on, you might be using all of your free electricity. And we can't predict when you're going to put the kettle on, when you're going to put the washing machine on, when the cloud's going to come over. So we can't predict with great certainty. We can only assume an average based upon the evidence that we've got of 600,000 solar systems around the UK. Yeah, average people doing an average life. So we've got your earnings and savings. Now, you might save yourself, I don't know, 200 quid a year. You might earn yourself maybe another um, 560 quid a year. It's not bad for a six and a half grand investment, is it? Not bad at all. Especially when that's going up each year and your investment's level stayed the same. Whoa, silly money, silly money. Right, this is where a lot of people get confused. So let's take all of these away. They're all guaranteed. Let's concentrate on this bit now. Sometimes you're going to be generating more electricity than what you're actually using. And that electricity goes back down the grid. Yes, you feed into the grid. But what you get is what's called an export. You're exporting energy. So you've got your generation, your savings, and your export. Now the export <clears throat> on small systems, less than 120 panels, less than 30 kilowatts, which your house will not have that many panels, okay? The export is assumed, assumed in law, to be 50% of generation. So that means that 50% of what you generate is assumed to have gone down the grid. And you get 4.6 pence, I think it is at the moment. I think that's what it is. So let's say you've generated 1,000 kilowatts, times that by 14 pence, there's your 140 quid. And then 500, half of that, times 4.6, I think is 23 quid. Add them two together, you've got 163 quid. Your energy company pays that to you. Now, my advice is, because this is linked to the RPI, and it goes up on April 1st of every year, my advice is, when you give your readings to your energy company, your quarterly readings, 
you make sure you take a reading on the 31st of March, yeah? Because you want to get one rate there because the following day it goes up and you want to get your new rate. Because if you do it at the end of April or beginning of May, they're only going to guess when it actually, how much energy you actually done up to that particular date, yeah? So the 31st of March or the 1st of April is a very, very important date. So you've got your earnings coming in there. You assumed export there, plus your savings. Now you might end up with 900 quid a year with a very good system, a very good 400 system, and a 6.5K investment. Guys, that's 14.5%, 15% or whatever it is, yeah? And that's tax-free, and that's how it works. Now, you could actually make more savings. If you've got underfloor heating, um, you're gonna be using virtually all of your solar between March and, um, and, and September. Sorry, September and March, going around the other way. You're going to be using all of it during the day, aren't you? So your savings are going to be greater. If you're very frugal with your energy costs, which is what we want you to be, and very conscious about, you know, putting your washing machine on, then your dishwasher, then you're going to make savings as well. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, the idea is to make earnings and savings equal to your current spend. And we can do that with lots of very, very clever technology. One of the most common ones, which most decent solar companies will be doing, is this. I'll try and speak in layman's terms so everybody understands it. And if it feels a bit patronising, I'll do a pot. In fact, I'm not going to apologise at all because, you know, 99% of us aren't experts, yeah? We just understand how it works. And that's what we'll try to make you understand how it works. There's your hot water cylinder. That's the tank in your airing cupboard, yeah? That big tank. Oh, what does that do? It's full of hot water. It gets hot because you've got a boiler burning gas or oil circulating it around a coil which heats the water up and then the hot water comes out down your taps or you've got an immersion heater some people call it the emergency heater no it's an immersion heater it uses electricity to heat the water whereas this one uses oil or gas to heat the water now what we do here keeping it simple we call what's called a load reducer on we take this from a three kilowatt pull down to 750 watts and we put a device on here which measures how much you're exporting. When you're exporting more than 750 watts, we take it up there and we heat your water up. So you come home from work and you've got a tank full of hot water. Yeah. So you're going to make more savings. But if, if you've got a big family, if you've got a big solar system, you're at school and you're at work all day, you've got all this energy being generated and you're not using it. Well, if you dump it into there, you've got enough for maybe two hot baths at the end of the day. You might have saved yourself another, I don't know, 30 pence a day. You might have saved yourself a damn sight more. It all depends on how much you're spending on your gas or your oil, how much hot water you use and when you use it, all these different factors. All I can tell you is we're gonna give you free hot water out of your free electricity, which costs you absolutely nothing, yeah? Let me show you another way of looking at this. You got all that, yeah, lovely. Right, how's that coffee? Good? Right, you got your feet up? Good, right. Sunrise, sunset. A typical day with solar on a perfect day, south facing system. In the middle of winter, it's gonna come up lower, middle of summer, nice and high. Okay. A typical household, people in their 40s, early 50s. There's your background load of your electricity. Fridge, your freezer, your digibox, skybox, a couple of things on standby. Chargers, you've got your router, might have a computer on standby, printer on standby. There's other bits and pieces in the house which are on standby. Little green lights, little blue lights, little red lights. Turn them off! Yeah? But anyway, if you're not going to turn them off, there's your background load. It might be half a kilowatt, might be a little bit less. And then you all wake up in the morning and have breakfast. Now, some of you might come home at lunchtime and have lunch. And there's your electricity. Then you come home of an evening after school. There's your, oh, sorry, that should be higher. That's when all the electricity is being used. Boom. And then you all go back to bed. Okay. So what we've got is everything below both of these lines is free electricity. That's not costing you anything. And everything above this line but below this line is costing you money. 
and everything in here is wasted electricity or export. So let's imagine you did have that device which turns your hot water on. What would happen is maybe something like this would happen. All of a sudden you're using a lot more of the electricity that you generate. And let's say you had a heat panel or let's say you had something else that you wanted this device to turn different, different machines on, air conditioning. You might end up using all of your electricity. You're still going to be paid on the assumption that half of it has gone down the grid. It doesn't matter how much you use. Use as much of it as you can because you're going to save more money. But more importantly, you're going to save on the precious resources that the national grid needs to keep the hospitals, to keep the schools, to keep the factories, to keep the industry running, yeah? But we're going to be burning less fossil fuel because you are generating and using your own energy. And you're getting paid for it. Not only are you saving money, you're getting paid for it. And then you get paid for it again for assuming that it's going down the grid. But it's not actually going down the grid. You're using it, yeah? It's an absolute no-brainer. So that is how it works. Now you can apply that to a factory. Can you imagine a bloody great big roof which has got bloody great big bills underneath of it? £60,000 a year, £100,000 a year. Yeah? Some factories have got bills like that. I've been to some recently, food processing plants, they've got four or five factories around the UK, a quarter of a million pound a year. So we're building systems that will give them earnings and savings equal to their current spend. As a business investment, well, you're actually investing in an income stream, aren't you? In a revenue generator. Don't worry about solar. Don't worry about anything else in the environment. So all of that, you're a business at the end of the day. And if you run your household like a business, what you're doing is investing in a revenue generator. And that's what this is. Turning light into money at the solar shed. If you want to know more, give us a call. You know where I am? www, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, I'll just put Twit, you know what that means. Yeah, you've got YouTube, all the rest, and Flipboard. I don't know if you know Flipboard, have a look at Flipboard. Yeah, everything. The solar shed. Solar Kev at the solar shed trying to shed a little bit of light on the simple solar solutions. Cheers now.